the fact that Vivek Ramaswamy is anywhere near the top 100 of potential candidates for the United States presidency tells you all you need to know about the internal rot of the Republican National Committee, the Republican Party at the grassroots level, that these idiots would sit there and think you could get some sweet-talking, fast-talking used car salesman to talk you into making him the nominee of your party, to me, is just mind-numbingly, explosively stupid. Uh, that's the kind of stuff you get from Michael Steele. He doesn't pull any punches. Uh-uh. He tells the truth as he sees it, and he sees it. As a former head of the RNC, he's sickened, as I am, about what the Republican Party has become. He uh, longs for an actual true conservative to step up and lead the way, and for the rest of the people who currently are in the walk of the dawn of the dead uh, to wake up and uh, save themselves from themselves. And Michael Steele joins us now. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Walk of the dawn of the dead. I love that. That is so true. It's just the imagery <laughs> of it, like right? That. Yeah. It is. A, it yeah. really is. Are you, you going to see it play out again today? As Jim, go to the speaker. Jim, Jim, Jim Jordan, the Washington Post wrote yesterday, Jim Jordan's remarkably thin legislative track record. Aaron Blake, terrific writer at the Washington Post, wrote a story citing the Center for Effective Lawmaking, which talks about bills that become law, bills that get some kind of traction, and how significant they are. Jim Jordan... Last Congress, only four lawmakers ranked below him. He's been in the bottom five amongst House Republicans the past four Congresses and the bottom quarter of House Republicans in every Congress he served in. He's a bomb thrower. He is non He's not interested in working with Democrats on any level. And here's the problem. If you're Speaker of the House, you've got to get bills to the Senate that the Senate will pass. So this right. is a vote for constipation, Michael. It is exactly that. It is exactly that. And what they'll do, as we saw uh, with the the takedown of McCarthy, they'll blame everybody else but themselves. They'll say, oh, well, this happened. We're not getting anything done because the Democrats won't agree with us. Oh, okay. So let me get this straight. So it's like, you know, we're a family living in a house and dad decides he wants to burn down the house and he's blaming the kids and, and his wife because they don't agree with him. Because they don't, they like the house. They don't want to burn it down. That's really what you're left with. You know, this this performative, uh, very very selfish, very anti-democratic uh, view of governance. And they're going to, you know, go through rounds today. How many we don't know. But at the end, I mean, I'm hearing that already. Some of those who've been claiming, oh, I'm not voting for Jim Jordan, are buckling up and promising him they'll vote for him. And it'll probably go three, four, five, six rounds. But the embarrassment of it um, will get to the point where, you know, they'll say, okay, let's just go ahead and do it. It's, it's just till January. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to me how stupid they are. Well, and that's what we fear that it is. They say, oh, well, just pass it. We got to get something done. This, this battle for right. the gavel has got to be over. But what about McCarthy kind of sitting in the background going, mm, if this doesn't pass, or maybe he's talking to people and saying, I could come back in. He's not going to come back in. And, and the thing about McCarthy, which was very telling, was, we could have had Congressman Scalise as the speaker uh, last week, but McCarthy was uh, instrumental in killing that because he does. They don't get along. They, mm-hmm. They've never really liked each other, uh, and so again, it was all personal. It was all what I want, what's important for me, and, and getting my way. It wasn't what's the best thing for the House, given how how incredibly incompetent in governing the Republican Caucus is right now. Uh, let's at least put someone up who's going to be able to sit down across from the president, have a modicum of respectability in the eyes of the American people, uh, and actually deal with this, the budget that has to be addressed in the next 30 days, deal with uh, Ukraine, deal with uh, what's happening in Israel. Uh, and, and the reality of it is they said no. He, he, he played the card that would, again, perpetuate the crazy. And and I don't see how people think anything's changed. What so Jim Jordan, who has, as you just rightly pointed out, no legislative record in the House. He he got there and has done jack in the time he's been in the Congress, except run his mouth, make noise, and disrupt. Right? What's he going to do? 
when he sits down across, when he calls the president of the United States and says, okay, let's sit down and talk about the budget, what's he going to give the president? What's he going to give uh, Senate Republicans? That means not just Senate Democrats who got to sign off on, on what comes out of the House. Senate Republicans do, too. Mitch McConnell's not crazy. He's sitting there going, look, we, we are just one seat, two seats away from taking control of the House. Why am I going to mess up the prospects of that? by entertaining stuff that we know is not going to pass in the Senate. Well, and, 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 and that's the problem going forward, that Republican voters need to wrap their heads around. You want to guarantee you're going to lose the House? Have Jim Jordan yeah. be Speaker. Because going into, going into 2024, it'll grind the House to a halt. And the, the only reason that uh, Republicans in safely gerrymandered districts are collapsing today, I'm hearing, and you would know better than any of us, is there was a meeting yesterday where Jordan made it quite clear that the media, the conservative media, would primary candidates who didn't vote for him. Yeah, there you go. They, you know, you've got Sean Hannity out there whipping for, uh, on behalf of Jim Jordan. You've got, you know, threats to the members. And it, there comes a point where those 18 uh, Republicans who are sitting in seats that were in districts that were won by Joe Biden, uh, five of whom are in New York. Those seats in New York are gone. If, our, if, if the majority they have is five, you're already in the hole going into 2024 because those seats, those New York seats are pretty much toast. I mean, that the party has recognized that for a long time now. So they've been scrambling trying to figure out where else you shore up the votes that you know you're going to lose, the seats you know you're going to lose. And with Jim Jordan at the top, how do you do that? And, you know, that's, it's just an amazing uh, lack of self-awareness that you're becoming more and more politically irrelevant and it's going to play itself out at, uh, out at ballot boxes in the future. And people like McConnell and others are sitting there going, we can't stop them in the house from doing what they're doing. The only thing we can do is try to hold the line here in the Senate and keep it as close as possible for us to at least have one chamber um, should Joe Biden get reelected, which is likely in 2024. Well, you're the best. Thank you so much. I just do want to wish you a happy birthday on Thursday. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You so doing much. anything thank fun? I, yeah, I'm going to hang out with my wife. We're going to go to dinner and kind of chill yes. with my, my son who lives nearby. So it'll be a nice little family thing. Nice. Well, happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, thank pal. But, and by, and by the way, I just got a text. Uh, it seems that this all this conversation apparently is a moot point. George Santos says he's already speaker. <laughs> oh, that, you know what? <laughs> I knew that was, I knew that's where they would land. Yeah. George Santos said he's already speaker. He's always been speaker. He's a good speaker. He owns speakers at his house and he listens to music on. He's good. George Santos also said he's president of Uranus. I didn't even know they had a president. <laughs> Michael Steele, MSNBC and everywhere. Follow him. <laughs> follow him on social. Yes, it is. Follow him everywhere. He appreciates my juvenile behavior. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. <laughs> See you later. I didn't realize. Did you realize? I, I didn't know. know. I didn't know. I didn't know there was a president of Uranus.